And uh, uh, for the beginning, I could say that uh, uh, I didn't count how many uh, webinars we have had already uh, so far. Uh, but the fun fact is that uh, we have kind of neglected our uh, mm -hmm. network members. So the first one, Wim Crujo, uh, was, uh, was uh, our member. And thereafter, we have had uh, many, many excellent speakers. Uh, but at least during the presentation, they have not been uh, in our network officially. So we decided that it's uh, high time to correct uh, this uh, uh, issue. And uh, great pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Marion Rivalan uh, from the University of Bordeaux. Uh, uh, from the University of Paris, uh, uh, Saclay uh, right now. But uh, yes, uh, Marion got her PhD from the University of Bordeaux, uh, where she was interested in spontaneous uh, individual differences of vulnerability to mental disorders. And she was working with rats for that and, and identified the subpopulation of healthy rats with poor decision making uh, and uh, did her uh, thesis there. And then she continued as a postdoc in Berlin at Humboldt and Charité universities, where she worked on developing new automated home cage monitoring equipments, uh, one of them being inspired by visible borough system. And, uh, uh, and uh, actually this work uh, for uh, over, over the years will be presented to, during this webinar. Uh, in addition to research uh, during postdoc period, uh, she was also involved in establishing and leading the animal behavioral core facility at Charité University. And uh, just very recently, Marion returned to France and joined the group of Professor Sylvie Granon, working to pursue her work on the neurobiology of individual differences in social and non-social decision making. Uh, Marion, as mentioned already, is a very active member of our Cost Action Tea Time. She is a co-leader of Working Group 3 and has been very much involved also in development of our uh, behavior forum, uh, discussion uh, forum. So, uh, without further delay, uh, Marion, uh, the screen is now yours, please. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Butula, for this very kind presentation, introduction. Um, yes, and it's actually it's very nice to be here um, and to have the opportunity to present uh, today this work. We took uh, actually many years to complete um, and uh, consisted in the cognitive and social profiling of rats born without serotonin in the brain using uh, conventional testing, but also home cage environment. Um, like you said, this, this work uh, took place at the University Charité in Berlin, Germany, and um, this is a, a big part of uh, Lucy Alonso uh, PhD work, who's also the, the first author of, of the paper. So to start with a little bit of context, uh, as you all know, mental disorders are highly prevalent diseases and they are leading causes of disability worldwide. Uh, but despite this heavy burden on mental health, uh, we can't really say we understand, me understand mental disorders very well still. Um, as, and as we are looking for uh, biological markers um, and pathways of the expressions, many of us also in this consortium, um, we are uh, questioning basically the, the, the models that we have been using for years and, and to come. And we are advocating for uh, using use of more refined approaches to model and study mental health in animals um, for better translational validity, but also to help uh, reverse symptoms and improve life, uh, the quality of life of patients and their uh, support system. Uh, among different uh, refined approaches um, to model mental disorders in animals, one is, uh, and you know it, quite well, I think, to go beyond the categorical uh, classification of mental disorders, uh, which is to uh, consider mental disorders like uh, separated entities uh, to which different biological markers would be associated with um, too. And, uh, but instead acknowledge the fact that um, uh, symptoms 
overlap between mental disorders and that to find the common biological markers of these strong diagnostic symptoms could actually um, uh, provide better treatment for, for of, of these treatment symptoms. Another realization has been uh, about the complexity of the behavioral profile th that the patients uh, show. Um, and although we don't know what are the invisible interactions between the many different uh, symptoms patient experience, these interactions uh, might actually play an important role in the way the people, the patients are uh, experiencing, experiencing their disease. Which, um, which, which tell us something important about the fact that we should have a, a more global and multidimensional approach when we uh, profile or um, a model uh, mental health in animals. Another important change or addition we should, uh, something we should con consider more is the, uh, to address the diversity of the symptoms that, that patients experience in their everyday life. And that can be uh, quite different from what uh, we assess in the lab. And, um, and today we have the chance to have uh, home cage monitoring systems um, that allows us to look at what is happening in the home cage in their everyday life, uh, in the everyday life of, the, of our animals. And this gives us, give us also uh, a, a quite nice insight on the pathological state of our uh, models at all time. So combining these uh, three different approaches, um, the goal of this uh, study um, the study I'm presenting today was to question the role of a biological system. Here, we focused on serotonin as a common modulator of transdiagnostic symptoms and, um, and also real-life markers uh, of mental disorders. Serotonin is indeed a, a promising biological modulator um, of uh, several... Um, um, yeah, of several uh, transdiagnostic symptoms. Um, as uh, through its action um, uh, on many pre- and postsynaptic receptors throughout the brain, uh, which regulates mood and a lot of uh, important physiological functions. Serotonin is also a target in treating uh, uh, mental mood disorders, but also other neuropsychiatric disorders such as addiction, ADHD, uh, obsessive compulsive disorder and um, psychopathy and aggression related disorders. At the behavioral level, uh, serotonin is important for the modulation of uh, uh, different executive functions and, and social behaviors. And um, in the lab, it has been shown that reduction of serotonin uh, alters decision making, uh, make the individual more impulsive, also more inflexible more aggressive and uh, to show uh, quite inappropriate uh, social behaviors. In terms, these different uh, aspects, social and, and, and cognitive, are uh, key markers of, um, of most of these, of all these uh, uh, mental disorders, which make them interesting as transdiagnostic trans uh, um, factors. So for the multidimensional profiling of serotonin function, uh, we uh, selected um, we selected tests, classical tests, to assess uh, these uh, executive and social uh, functions. To which we added home cage monitoring of social and non-social um, uh, behavior in, in so in the, the everyday life of the animal, and also to uh, identify uh, novel uh, markers of serotonin function in the home cage. Then uh, using uh, supervised and unsupervised statistics, uh, we asked ourselves um, which one of these functions could be, are actually primarily affected by the lack of, or, uh, lack of serotonin and how they could relate um, to mental conditions in humans. So the goal of the, the study was to expose the multidimensional profile associated with serotonin dysfunction. Um, and then we explored how the most affected functions could actually compare to human disorders. Um, we expected that our deficit in serotonin would alter most, if not all, the cognitive and, fun and social function we tested. Um, and um, also had a, we expected it to have a, a very strong impact on their life in the home cage and that their profile would match uh, aspects of impulse control disorder. 
So um, to target central uh, serotonin um, in the brain, we use the recently created line of uh, rats, um, the TPH2 knockout rat uh, of uh, background strain dark aguti, and which presents a genetic deletion of the tryptophan hydroxylase 2, which is the rate limiting uh, enzyme in the synthesis of serotonin in the brain. And so without this TPH2, this disabled uh, the production of serotonin uh, in the brain to uh, levels that were not detectable in any uh, brain area of these animals. This constitutive lack of brain serotonin um, uh, led to developmental and autonomic abnormalities, but which mainly resolved uh, in adulthood and in some uh, neurobiological specificities. Um, so basically, these animals have uh, normal uh, so they have the, the serotonin circuitry is there. Uh, the mm -hmm. neurons mm -hmm. are uh, have uh, normal characteristics and they can also be functional uh, when 5-HTP um, is supplemented. They have uh, classical dopaminergic and noradrenergic levels in the, in the brain and uh, normal acute stress response in, in specific uh, condition of tests. Uh, differences are um, uh, higher BDNF level in the hippocampus and prefrontal cortex, and also a reduced sensitivity of 5-81A uh, autoreceptor. At the, B at the behavior level, uh, it was only known that they were uh, more, aggr more aggressive uh, in the resident intruder paradigm, which is also a very specific test, but not much, not at nothing actually was known about their cognition and their um, how they would organize or interact uh, with each other in the home cage. So all the animals we tested uh, received a subcutaneous RFID tag under the skin uh, and went through the same battery of tests that took basically three and a half months uh, per rat. Um, we tested the cognitive and affective abilities using a classical operant chambers uh, where the animal could choose between uh, four, two, or one um, nose poke holes, um, and by poking could receive a reward depending on the schedule of the of the test. Uh, we also used open arenas to test uh, social uh, uh, preference and recognition and uh, anxiety-like behavior in the dark light box. Uh, the animals would be tested alone, one after the other, manually transported from their home cage to the test and back. You all know that. Um, but um, this is important because, of course, this 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 uh, system, these tests are great because they uh, help us assess specific functions. Uh, they have been uh, validated uh, many years and, and improved all the time. But they also um, offer artificial and simplified versions of uh, problem solving, right? So uh, to add to this and a bit more. Um, yeah, naturalistic behavior. We we measure the, the, the behavior of the animal in their home cage. Um, in uh, and for that we developed a, a, a new type of uh, uh, home cage. Uh, the design is based on the visible burrow system uh, developed by Blanchard and Blanchard in ninety five, and um, the animal can live there undisturbed for many uh, days in groups. Uh, here we chose a groups of six individuals. So here is a big, uh, uh, I have a video for you. Um, here is a big um, uh, open uh, area, bigger at least uh, than their normal cage, uh, where they have access to food and water at libitum. And then they can access a burrow area uh, through tunnels and uh, where there are also nesting chambers. Um, here uh, it's infrared transparent so you can see, but it's really dark for the animals. Under the cage is a grid uh, of RFID sensors that helps us um, uh, identify each individual in the group uh, and to know where they are, when, all the time. On top of the cage, we had a camera uh, for recording uh, social behaviors, <laughs> anything that happened in the cage. Um, exactly. We also looked at physiological responses um, with uh, the changes in corticosteroid metabolites uh, in the feces of the animal before and after the VBS, and we monitored their weight. 
So um, first results, uh, we uh, to look at the decision-making abilities of the animals, their motivation for food and their uh, flexibility, uh, we use the rat gambling task, uh, which is a task where the animal has the choice between four different options. Um, and then and they don't know the consequences of their choices at the beginning of the test. They will have to deduct trial after trial, which options are the most advantageous on the long term. And the test is organized so that two options are immediately more rewarding, although they are associated to, to unpredictable longer timeouts where the animal can't make any choice, which makes this, these options on the long term, this test last one hour, uh, less favorable. They will eat less for, uh, less food at the end, although more immediately, if they choose only these options. The two other options are less rewarding immediately, but associated to shorter uh, timeouts, which make these options on the long term more rewarding. Um, so, in the, in and and this is, I think this is all I wanted to say about the. The protocol. So here is how the behavior, the, the animal behave in this test is that they um, they start at, at, at chance level because they don't know the, the, the consequences of their choices. And then they progressively orientate their choices toward the most advantageous option. This, this is a result on average. And as you can see, there is a very large uh, standard deviation around the mean at the end of the test. And this is because this, this test is also uh, known for uh, being able to distinguish naturally existing individual differences in decision-making strategies. Meaning that in this test, we don't only have individuals that choose the most advantageous option on the long term, the good decision makers, but we also have individuals that are undecided and other individuals that we call poor decision makers, which are um, choosing to uh, stick with the uh, immediate uh, consequences, whatever the long-term consequences are. These animals um, have always been found in this test in all control groups at a level of between 15 of 30% of the control animals uh, show this type of strategy. And then we have um, uh, characterized them um, and showed these were past other, other studies, just to tell you a little bit about the profile of these animals because it's interesting uh, when we talk about serotonin. Um, and um, just to tell you that these animals, they are, they are there spontaneously in control groups. They have specific behavioral and biological um, uh, profile. They are, um, they are more motivated for food and they show uh, increased uh, inflexibility when we reverse the conditions in a reversed uh, rat gambling task. And they also show uh, different role involvement of uh, their prefrontal and subcortical uh, regions when doing the test. Even more interesting for today, they show differences in monoamine uh, metabolism. So when we were knowing well the, the profile of these four decision makers, we were expecting that um, without serotonin in the brain, uh, the animals would all be uh, showing poor decision making, uh, having a poor decision making strategy in the rat gambling task, uh, going also with the fact that serotonin is sensitive to uh, uh, motivation for food and, and cognitive flexibility. In yellow are the, the control groups, uh, the sorry, the, the TPH2 knockout animals. And uh, our results uh, started uh, were a bit surprising since um, on average, all the animals could, um, could show the, the typical curve and uh, we did not see uh, more poor decision makers in the TPH2 knockout group as we expected. This was also not found uh, to impact the, 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 the lack of serotonin, didn't impact the motivation for food, uh, did not increase it, and did not make, make the animal more uh, inflexible. That was very surprising, uh, but this, is, this was how it was. Um, animals without serotonin in the brain uh, this one uh, did not uh, have a poorer uh, decision-making strategy, uh, increased motivation to reward, or were more uh, inflexible. Since uh, for the rest of the, the, the presentation, uh, the rest of the presentation, I will not talk about these uh, different profiles now. I will only focus on the genotype comparison since these uh, good and poor decision-makers did not uh, differ 
in the in the first in the next steps. So, like I said, we also looked at uh, impulsivity in these animals um, in uh, three different tests that I will go uh, that I will pass very quickly. Um, um, and uh, which these tests are also known to be uh, very much sensitive to serotonin function. The delay discounting task, which is also known as the marshmallow test in humans, uh, and tests for the tolerance for delayed but gra gra greater gratification. Uh, the probability discounting task, which is another type of, uh, let's say, simplified gambling task, uh, which assesses the tolerance of the animal for uh, uncertainty, um, although it's also associated to greater gratification. And then this uh, fixed interval extinction schedule, which is uh, measuring the ability of the animal to seize um, looking for food uh, when there is no food available anymore. And um, here, lower tolerance for delayed or uncertain gratification would make the animal switch uh, more readily to uh, a, a less rewarding, but certain and, and immediate reward. And this would be a marker of cognitive impulsivity. Here, um, the, the lack of control of motor drive, integrating the changes of the context, informs about the motor impulsivity. Very surprisingly, again, uh, the animals without serotonin in the brain did not were not more impulsive in any of these different tests compared to the controls. Um, and this is also what I, I've written here. Looking at the social uh, preference and recognition of these animals, um, both uh, genotypes uh, showed first um, um, nice habituation to the to the cage. Uh, and then when we inserted a new conspecific in one corner of the cage, they both increased their interest and the time they spent in, the, in, uh, in proximity of this corner and then habituated nicely to the presence of this animal uh, with the repetition of um, their encounter with the now uh, becoming familiar animal. Looking at using the dark light box, um, uh, control and, and uh, knockout animals did not show differences in anxiety-like behavior. Here is the median um, in terms of time they spent in the light uh, zone. Although you might have um, seen this subgroup of animals, this, this uh, subgroup of, of uh, knockout animals who spend nearly all their time in the light uh, area. Um, uh, but um, just to tell you that they don't have a specific phenotype when we looked at all the other tests. So um, we, I, I'm not going to talk about them further. Uh, central serotonin deficiency did not impact in these tests uh, social recognition and anxiety-like behavior. So um, with these cognitive and affective abilities that are vastly known to be impaired by the reduction of serotonin in other studies, here we have found uh, the very uh, that these uh, cognitive uh, functions and, and affective functions were very well preserved uh, in the absence of brain serotonin. And I said it many times, but we really were not expecting this. Um, so we started asking ourselves what could be the reason. And uh, one thing uh, obviously is uh, thinking about what are the specificities of our animal model. The, of our animal model. And um, although knockout technology is very useful for targeting genes and avoid uh, potential off-target effects of um, pharmacological study, for example, um, we, they're also known to uh, develop unexpected compensatory mechanisms sometime that could uh, neutralize their, um, the, the, the perturbation we're trying to test and lead to lack of phenotypes. So uh, following this lead, and based on what we know knew about these animals, um, and also the, the, the mouse line, the TPH2 knockout mouse line, um, we thought that maybe the increased uh, level of BDNF uh, in the brain of these animals and the hyper innovation, uh, of, uh, serotonergic hyper innovation could uh, be uh, indicative of uh, increased plasticity of the serotonin system and uh, of uh, neuronal branching in these animals. 
and that uh, combined with the existing co-transmission of glutamated dopamine in baseline condition and in, in, in control condition, um, maybe um, there with the in these. Uh, in these animals, in the knockout animals, um, the serotonin, serotonin circuitry has been uh, activated and used uh, by other means uh, in the absence of serotonin, and that could have helped recover the behavioral functions we tested. So this is an hypothesis um, of a compensatory scheme. Uh, there might be others, um, and um, but we think it could also be uh, very interesting to further study as it could be a, a powerful biological target for cognitive remediation. But that would be for later. How about these behave how about these animals in their home cage? Because this is this is um, this is really what we want to know now. Um, and um, so for that we use this uh, the automated VVS I presented before. And um, we uh, developed different methods to analyze the RFID and the video data. And uh, in ways we could uh, extract as much information as, as we could. Uh, classical one uh, parameter is the distance traveled um, uh, per hour, as it is presented here, but per hour and per groups. Uh, we also looked at roaming entropy in the home cage, which is, which is a, an indicator of the, uh, the way the animal occupy the cage. Uh, and the, the higher the, the roaming entropy, the more uniform. Uh, the use of the cage and the lower, um, the more uh, it means the animal use a more restricted, most restricted uh, zones of the cage. We also looked at the relative flesh preference in the home cage. Um, and um, here, the more blue or purple you will see uh, later um, means that the, the more the control animal are detected versus the, the knockouts. And here, uh, the contrary for the knockouts. Uh, from the video data, uh, trained experimenters manually scored uh, 21 uh, different behaviors uh, and created isograms. <clears throat> here are the most uh, the behavior that were mostly detected. So huddling behavior, sleeping together in close contact, eating, and one type of aggression, which is struggling at feeder. Um, we also uh, developed a method, a graphical representation of the relationship between the animals for uh, when they behave uh, together, when they, they perform a certain behavior like aggression or hurdling uh, when they are interaction. And for that, we use social network analysis. And with this analysis, we added uh, two extra <laughs> levels of, <laughs> we added two extra levels of um, uh, interpretations. So one at the um, here you see at the at a, a level of, okay sorry so with this type of analysis um, at the individual level we can extract a lot of new parameters uh, like uh, which animal is more central uh, inside the inside the group uh, with which individual it interacts more or which animal it doesn't etc. Um, the other level of interpretation is the group level, where we can extract uh, parameters that tells us, uh, for example, things about the group cohesion. Um, looking at the density, for example, tells us how well connected the network is. Uh, here is a visualiz visualization per group. So it's more like uh, for illustration. And then we also use the, that these parameters uh, to compare the the genotypes, so here you would have average density of the of the different uh, genotypes, and we could see how they, the 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 density of the network evolves uh, with time. I mean across days. We also established uh, dominant scores uh, using the glico uh, rating method, which is a method that calculates uh, the in individual ratings um, over time. Um, based on the outcome of the of each agonistic interaction between pairs of animals. So basically, when an, two animals are interacting with each other, one uh, will lose and one will win, and this will basically give the rating to these to each animal. 
But what is interesting with the glico rating method uh, compared to the ELO rating method that, that you probably know is that um, the rating of the individuals are also updated when other individuals are uh, interacting. Um, so, and this is interesting because it takes into account the fact that even if animals are not directly in interaction, they are part of the same system, the same uh, social system, and that this definitely impacts uh, the way the, the animals are within the system. So with the glycol rating method, we could look at the uh, when the dominance emerge, how fast and how stable it is. And we also used um, these different ratings to look at the distribution of power within the group. Uh, the measure is a bit more uh, complicated, but to be, to, to be a bit simpler now, it's basically comparing the, the difference between the highest and the lowest uh, rating and depending on the uh, on the on the amplitude, we could say uh, if the the hierarchy at the end of the test was uh, rather flat or more uh, extreme or despotic. Okay, so in the automated in the in the home cage, um, we saw that the TPH2 knockout had a higher uh, level of activity, especially during the light phases. Um, and um, they had also uh, lower roaming entropy uh, total, I mean, on, on during, yeah, all days or over days, um, indicating an, a more restricted uh, use of the, of the home cage, of their environment. And um, they would be less detected at the food and water uh, areas and also in the biggest um, nesting area. Uh, they would they would prefer to stay at the at at the at the interface between the two environments, basically uh, hidden in the tunnels, and uh, and uh, they would also be seen a bit more in the open area, in the center of the open area, but really like guarding this 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 area. They also uh, lost more weight and uh, showed uh, increased uh, level of corticosterone metabolites. Uh, after the, the BBS. So here are our, are our first uh, positive results, um, uh, rather interesting, that um, with a lack of uh, serotonin in the brain, these animals have sustained activity, uh, although in smaller territory, occupying smaller territories, ignoring food source, uh, and uh, but fa favoring hiding and escape routes, um, all, all that uh, link, uh, associated with increased uh, stress levels. Um, TPH2 knockout rats uh, also uh, showed uh, less huddling behavior, which is, uh, and also less grooming uh, behavior than the controls, which are uh, important uh, affiliative behavior. Uh, they, like we said, I mean, they also eat less. They showed increased aggression and uh, sexual uh, behavior. These were same sex groups of rats. Um, and this behavior could, uh, could definitely be like displaced aggression. Uh, they also showed a higher uh, number of uh, sniffing bouts, which is also behavior related to aspects of communication and uh, could also be linked to uh, uh, social memory, uh, social form formation of uh, social memory. Uh, when we looked at uh, the qualitative aspects of group dynamic, we saw that uh, with the social network analysis, that not only the, the control animals uh, were huddling more uh, in total, but they were doing so with all the other animals of the group, uh, which was definitely not what uh, we was not, it was not the case for the, for the knockouts. Although with time, uh, we see the density of the network normalizing. And this is, for two groups here, but this is also what we see here with the normalization uh, for the for, for all the groups of the different genotypes. Um, same analysis applied to aggression. We see a different story, of course, uh, but um, but interestingly, we we can see that the at the group level here uh, with increased density, so all animals are fighting with all the all the others, um, except with these two. Uh, are not linked. Uh, they don't. They don't interact for this specific behavior. 
uh, whatever. <laughs> Um, but uh, we also see that the density, uh, although here we see it's very high, the, the, the density is, is kind of normalizing with time here. This was a case of, for sniffing, the density of the network for sniffing was also normalizing over time. The only um, network it didn't normalize was, was for sexual behavior that was kept being uh, uh, more dense uh, for the knockouts than the, the controls. Looking at their uh, hierarchical organization, so we saw that in both groups, um, individual uh, hierarchical ranks uh, emerged with time. So you, as you can see with the, the move of the individual lines up and down. And so that at the end of the, the test, we had a nice distribution above, distribution of, of ranks above and under the initial rating score. Uh, with one uh, dominant animal always easily um, identified um, in all the groups. So that absence of serotonin does not prevent hierarchy uh, formation, but um, maybe, uh, but, but looking at other parameters, uh, this hierarchy seems to be of different type. Uh, with more changing points, even when we normalized it, um, with more changing points in the knockout groups, um, the, this, 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 this organization appears uh, less stable. And uh, like I said earlier, looking at the power distribution between the, the highest rank and the lowest rank, um, the, the skewed, um, the, the very high amplitude uh, for, uh, for this power distribution for the knockout groups indicates a higher level of aggression from the dominant versus the sub subordinate which is a marker of a uh, uh, despotic-like uh, type of, um, of, uh, of groups, of, of social groups. And so here we showed uh, with these different uh, results that uh, absence of serotonin uh, altered the expression of uh, social and non-social behaviors, uh, many different types. Um, it also affects how the animals connect uh, through these different behaviors across days and it also uh, disorganized their uh, type of uh, hierarchy. So taking these home cage results together, um, the knockout, uh, TPH2 knockout animals uh, show uh, higher activity overall, smaller territory, uh, spending more time in the shelter, ignoring food source and have a high stress level, which uh, remind us uh, very well, um, which is very similar to the hypervigilant defensive profile that was um, well described in, in subordinate animals in a classical VBS experiments. Uh, and in these uh, several papers, they also showed that these type of, uh, these type of animals um, have increased risk uh, to the development of uh, mental and, and physiological problems, including depression and metabolic disorders. Together with the other uh, results, uh, higher aggression, sexual, uh, but low affiliative, uh, unstable um, hierarchy, higher power imbalance. Uh, we showed that uh, these, these animals uh, without serotonin in the brain um, have indeed a highly dysfunctional uh, social uh, phenotype. And yeah, and so yeah, here we are. With the same animal, we obtained very contrasting results um, when we use different contexts of tests. Uh, and uh, although we um, have uh, ideas of uh, one compensatory mechanisms, but also others, um, these mechanisms definitely showed their limits as soon as we uh, looked at the behavior uh, in the more challenging um, and dynamic environments and social environments of their home cage. And um, I find it uh, important in the way that the, this, this contrast uh, in the cognitive demand, demand uh, between these different environments is actually what made us uh, made it clear that serotonin is 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 really important uh, for solving problems in complex and uncertain conditions of of, of life, probably more than um, when it's uh, it's it's in simpler conditions. Um, 
I think this this uh, the, these results also uh, showcased uh, nicely the importance to complement our uh, cognitive our classical tests that are still very nice to use, but um, we should probably complement them more with the uh, with this type of approach uh, that we really really like here. Um, and also for us, it's it it's what made also. Um, uh, this is this is how we could uh, discover uh, the 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 actual dysfunction of these animals. Otherwise, we would just have had a, a big bunch of, of negative results and just like hypothesis on of about why. But uh, here with the home cage um, environment and the social, yeah, we we could basically uh, go further and um, and um, and that is that is super cool. Um, yeah, finally, and and it's uh, it's only two more slides. Um, we um, we ask ourselves among all these uh, impaired behavior, which which one were the one uh, that, that that were mostly impacted by the lack of brain serotonin, and for that we fed our data to uh, uh, two complementary methods, so a principal component analysis and uh, that. You probably all know well, and a random forest classifier, which is a machine learning uh, method that is used uh, for uh, classification problems. And um, here we saw that uh, using the PCA, the principal component analysis, the um, the genotype separated pretty well along the first the one dimension, this first dimension, and that the variables that were um, uh, that we're loading most uh, on the, the on this dimension, where also uh, the the variables that were uh, discriminating the genotype the best in the random forest classifier. It's just nice information. And these variables were uh, increased sexual uh, behavior, changes in weight and corticosterone level, uh, factors related to their um, hypervigilant and defensive behavior and uh, maintenance and uh, when uh, we looked uh, then then we checked uh, which mental disorder um, would have could uh, uh, which which mental disorder would have these uh, these behavior impairment listed as symptoms uh, in the DSM-5 and in the ICD-11 we found that uh, uncontrolled uh, uncontrolled uh, repeated sexual behavior and aggression neglect of personal care and health, cortical disturbances, hypervigilance, um, and um, and many other, and some related aspects were all uh, key symptoms or characteristics of impulsive control disorders, but also of other, uh, were comorbid in other anxiety and uh, stress uh, disorders. So thanks to the home cage uh, environment um, monitoring, uh, we, we revealed a quite nice and rich uh, phenotype of the uh, TPH2 knockout rats. And that also confirmed this, this uh, line as a potential interesting model to study transdiagnostic features of human disorders. And um, that um, serotonin plays definitely an important role in the modulation of, of complex uh, social and non-social daily life behavior. In this study, using the TPH2 knockout rats, uh, we found that we, we showed that central serotonin uh, was not essential for cognitive uh, abilities when tested in, in classical tests, uh, but was key for everyday life and social uh, challenges. Especially, um, serotonin was especially uh, uh, critical for uh, maintenance of weight and corticosteroid levels animal aggression, uh, the behavior related to maintenance, and also the way they, they behave, they, they occupy the, the, their space uh, in, the, in the home cage. Um, so here again, but I think this, this, is, this is really something important. Uh, um, context, the complexity of the context should be better integrated in our experimental designs. This brings so much uh, interesting uh, information. And this should definitely be the case when we study serotonin function. For me, one, one, one important next step uh, would be to also be able uh, to detect cognitive function. I mean, uh, yeah, different aspects of cognition 
directly in the home cage in the un in unconstrained situation. Um, like for example, uh, which animal, uh, which animals are making uh, decisions? I wanted to say together, but it's a bit. Let's say, where is my animal making a decision? In which context? With who? Um, and is this type of decision uh, being uh, stable over time and over context? And um, that that would be definitely uh, something. Uh, to to develop and uh, yeah and with 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 Lucille and and the other student who helped with that uh, project we I think we had a it was challenging but we had also a great time uh, looking for the best or, or for us at least for this study the best uh, extra analysis we could do and especially the social network analysis was a lot of work but also uh, very rewarding in the way that it really uh, gave us a lot of uh, food for thoughts and, and interesting uh, uh, results to, to basically um, expose um, the, the profile of this animal and in a more complex uh, way. So now I would like just to thank you all for your attention. Uh, thank the funding bodies and um, uh, the institution who welcomed this project. And, um, and of course the PI that, that I have collaborated with and um, and Lucille Alonso, uh, whose uh, whose PhD work um, is is in big part this paper, and yeah, and all the bachelor and master students who were involved uh, more or less in this project, but in this uh, bigger uh, funding scheme. Uh, thank you again, and um, please let me know if you have uh, any questions.